Welcome to The Big Story. I'm Gretchen Ho. I'm Sean Yao. And I'm Pauline Verzosa. Tonight's Big Stories. Several areas up north, especially Cagayan, are still reeling from the wrath of Typhoon Ophel. And yet, another typhoon is threatening again, this time the eastern section of the Philippines. And how did former President Rodrigo Duterte do when he faced lawmakers investigating his drug war? Well, for his daughter and Vice President Sara, he exceeded expectations and deserves the title Best Dramatic Actor. And a lawyer becomes the recent addition to the National Police Commission or NAPOLCOM, the agency tasked to administer and control the PNP. Later, we will be sitting down with new NAPOLCOM Commissioner, Attorney Rafael Kalinisan. We begin tonight with the plight of almost 7,000 residents affected by Typhoon Opel in the province of Cagayan. One of the most heavily hit is the town of Santa Ana. Help is starting to pour in, but unfortunately, the national road, which is the only way in and out of the town, has been destroyed by the parade of cyclones in recent weeks. And now let's check the situation on the ground with Brian Basa, who is reporting to us live this evening from Cagayan. Brian, how's the weather there so far and are there still flooded areas in Cagayan? Good evening, Gretchen, Sean and Pawi. As of this time, it's a fair weather that's greeting us here at Gonzaga, in Gonzaga Town. Actually, we're just standing uh, a few meters away from Santana, medyo na dito tayo sa boundary. Uh, but even as uh, the, the weather is fair, even if the flood has already let up in all the areas in, in the town, uh, ito pa rin, no? we still see the signs of uh, the destruction left by uh, Typhoon Ophel in Cagayan Province. Case in point, what's behind me are piles upon piles of soil. Uh, our uh, uh, officials or our personnel from DPWH, the Public Works Department, are working double time. They're working day and night to make sure that uh, these piles upon piles of soil are being placed to uh, fill the gaps left by eroded approaches or ramps of that uh, destroyed uh, portion of the national road. Kasi di ba, ang report natin uh, earlier, I think the report was just last night, di ba? Merong uh, tulay na naging uh, inaccessible uh, because yung both sides pala ng uh, tulay na to, yung uh, ramp that connects it to the ramp that connects the, the bridge to the road, yun yung nag-erode uh, dahil uh, sobrang lakas ng baha. So ngayon, ang ginagawa ng officials uh, to make sure that this lone passageway in and out of Santa Ana, Cagayan, is, uh, becomes passable, ito ngayon ang pinupuno nila ng lupa para makonek na ulit yung bridge to both sides of the national road. So yung mga tao from Santa Ana can go to Gonzaga and neighboring towns. Ganun din naman yung mga from Gonzaga going to Santa Ana. Ladies. Brian, we're seeing uh, people uh, behind you um, crossing that bridge. Uh, is that correct that, that you are in the bridge itself? And uh, paano na yung mga sasakyan? Ano? Um, and in terms of engineering, what was wrong with uh, this bridge? Did they not foresee it? Uh, that it was that vulnerable? Mm -mm. Uh, when we asked the the uh, OIC Regional Director of DPWH Cagayan Valley, ang sabi niya is uh, ang lakas talaga ng baha. So kahit pa lagyan ng bakal yung, uh, yung ramp na yon, kasi I asked, would it have made a difference kung nilagyan ng bakal yun? Kasi walang bakal eh. It was, the, the whole structure is made of concrete. It still would not make a difference dahil the whole, yung, the whole approach was uh, carried away by the flood. Also, uh, ang tinitingnan nilang panaghihinala ang contributing factor are logs, yung trunks of trees that uh, were washed here from coming from the mountains. I think this is Sierra Madre, yung nakikita natin dito. Mukhang dyan lang galing yung mga malalaking uh, troso uh, na dito napunta. And uh, 
ang suspecha ng officials ay itong mga trosong ito dahil nga sa lakas ng agos ng baha nung kasagsaga ng bagyong Ophelis, ito yung tumatama dun sa lupa o ito yung tumatama dun sa structure uh, which made it easier for the flood to topple down or to, to slice, literally, slice off those portions of the national road. So ang effect, ito, kami, nakapark lang dito sa harap, yung mga motorcycles, hindi rin makapass through. The people here, uh, they have no choice but to uh, go down sa gilid, sa palayan, and then cross the river. But uh, it's nighttime here, and it, when it's nighttime, it's dark. So it's risky for the people to go down. So they will have to wait until sunrise for them to cross the river, ladies. All right, uh, Brian. Actually, no, tama ka. In fairness, nakatayo pa rin yung tulay. It is the national road doon sa bandang uh, siguro around the river banks, the banks of the water na lumambot at nahulog. But apart from that, no, um, I'm actually kind of relieved na yan ang pinufocus natin right now kasi uh, kung yan lang yung pinakamalalang salanta or at least na sakuna na nagyari dyan, okay na rin. Kamusta naman yung mga tao? Um, sa videos mo, we see some people moving around. It looks like they're crossing uh, in shallow portions of the river. Nakakagalaw na ba yung mga tao, yung mga evacuees? Or are they still uh, you know, being uh, told to stay put in, in the evacuation centers? Yeah. As soon as the rains let up, as soon as the weather became fair, nagsiuwi na from the evacuation centers ang uh, evacuees uh, because uh, they say that's how fast recovery happens here in Santa Ana. Kapag uh, pagkatapos ng uh, bagyo, pag umaraw na, agad bumabalik sa kanilang mga pang-araw-araw na gawain yung mga tao because uh, they are used to this kind of experience. They're used to having calamities pass through their town. So the expectation is they know what to do before, during, and after the storm. That's why you see here, uh, medyo nahihiya lang yung mga kababayan natin, but yes, we see people who are uh, standing by here on the bridge. They're saying hi to their loved ones. Nagvi-video call yung iba, yung iba nakikimarites, nagkukwentuhan. So you see everyday activities happening here in Santa Ana. Uh, talagang uh, back to normal agad ang sitwasyon dito, ladies. Okay, Brian, uh, I believe the Alagang Kapatid Foundation is also there to help those who were displaced by the typhoons. Uh, kamusta naman yung relief operations nila dyan? Alagang Kapatid Foundation has been consistent in its uh, goal to reach as many towns in Cagayan as possible. So kanina, while we are covering the developments here uh, on the bridge, they made it here. O yun nga lang, sa other side, because we are here on the, uh, yung papuntang Santa Ana side sila, yung pa Gonzaga side pa lang. Uh, what they did was they had uh, to, you know, carry the sacks of relief goods sa river. As in, talagang isa-isa nilang binuhat yung mga sakong yan, napakabigat. So they, uh, the good thing that they had uh, volunteers from the Lyceum of Apari uh, to help them kasi we recall that Alagang Kapatid Foundation has set up its base in Apari Town so that mas madali nilang uh, mapenetrate yung ibang areas. They were able to hand out 200 packs here in uh, Barangay Kasambalangan. That particular barangay uh, has some of the most, parang yun yan yung may pinakamaraming evacuees here in Santa Ana. It's a low-lying area kasi malapit sa coastal air. So we could see kanina yung, yung happy faces nila because uh, dumating ang tulong mula sa Alagang Kapatid Foundation. Ladies. Hey Brian, we do know that there's still another one coming, Pepito, who is forecasted to be a super typhoon. Last I heard, it was uh, probably going to make landfall in Aurora. Um, how are people preparing over there for that? Yes, uh, you know, they, they're, they're expecting na it's not going to be as strong as uh, Typhoon Offel when it hit uh, Cagayan. Kasi obviously, Santa Ana is on Offel's uh, trail. Uh, as far as Pagasa is concerned, ang estimate nila is mas mataas ang storm surge sa bandang Bicol region in Catanduanes. Uh, but even if Cagayan is... Uh, far from Katanduanes, di ba, yung, yung, 
not fear exactly, pero more on anxiety yung pangamba nila and doon pa rin because uh, this is the seventh consecutive storm. You're right. So parang paulit-ulit na silang pupunta sa evacuation center. Babalik na naman sa normal activities and the cycle goes on and on and on. So uh, with that, Ganun pa rin ang paalala ng mga otoridad uh, in, in the words of uh, the MDRRMO, the Municipal Disaster Management Officials, wag na sanang matigas ang ulo ng mga residente. Uh, if the authorities tell them to evacuate, uh, kahit na, for example, wala pang ulan na dumarating, pag sinabing mag-evacuate, mag-evacuate na. That's exactly the point of preemptive evacuation. Uh, the goal uh, or what the, the government wants is uh, for the people to move to safer ground ahead of the storm para wala nang disgrasya. So, ganun pa rin ang constant reminder nila. Nag-iikot-ikot sila sa mga evacuation centers, nag-iikot-ikot sila sa mga barangay uh, to remind uh, the residents of this uh, very, very important measure. Ladies. We do know Cagayan is a catch basin dealing with water from the coastal areas and also from the Sierra Madre. Madre. And Isabella, it is called Cagayan mm -hmm. Valley for a reason. Well, thank you so much and keep safe. Brian Basa reporting to us live from the province of Cagayan of North. While Typhoon Ophel unleashed its wrath in Cagayan, one mayor in the province was also venting on social media. On Facebook, Alcala Cagayan Mayor Tin Antonio said Pagasa never told them essential information that Ophel changed track, that it will make landfall in Bagao, and that they are directly on the path of the typhoon. Antonio also asked why the State Weather Bureau only announced Ophel's landfall at 2.07 p.m. on Thursday or 37 minutes after it happened. But Pagasa says there was no lapse on its part. In fact, they have been issuing advisories and reminders every three hours from the entry until the exit of the typhoon. Pagasa adds that while Ophel did not make landfall in other places in Cagayan, including Antonio's municipality, nearby areas should have still prepared just the same. Hindi naman po talaga dumaan po ng alkala po ang bagyo. Kahit na sa isang particular na bayan lang na tumama ang sentro, but of course the same uh, effects ang maramdaman nito ng mga karatig uh, uh, bayan. Now, Mayor Tin Antonio has yet to comment on Pagasa's explanation, but she earlier said there was preemptive and forced evacuation in Alcala. And as Tropical Storm Ophel continues to move away from the landmass of the country, all eyes are now on Tropical Storm Pepito, which has already entered the Philippine area of responsibility and has now rapidly intensified into a typhoon. Pepito is slowly making its way along the country's eastern portion. The question now is, where is Pepito headed exactly? And where will the center of the typhoon hit land? Let's head on over to Pagasa for some answers. Joining us tonight from the State Weather Bureau is Dan Villamil, Pagasa weather forecaster. Um, Dan, uh, can you give us the latest on Bagyong Pepito? Meron bang mga updates? May nagbago ba sa kanyang forecast track? Good evening ladies sa ating mga viewers here. So yung latest location po natin, as of 4 p.m. today, yung center ni Bagyong Pepito ay nasa layan 465 kilometers east of Giwan, Eastern Samar. Isa pa itong typhoon, patuloy na lumalakas, may taglay na lakas ng hangin na malapit sa gitna, na umaabot ng 150 kilometers per hour, and pagbukso na umaabot ng 185 kilometers per hour. Yung movement po nito, patuloy na west, northwestward sa bilis na 30 kilometers per hour. Dan, ano ang uh, forecast natin dito sa Bagyong Pipito? Ano? Um, siya ba ay hihina o lalakas pa patungo sa kalupaan? So sa ngayon yung forecast landfall scenario natin ay dito sa area ng, or sa vicinity ng Katanduan, Katanduanes. Pero hindi natin tinatanggal yung possibility ng landfall over any part of Bicol Region area. And in terms of heavy rainfall as early as tomorrow, Makakaranas sa tayo ng malalakas sa pag-ulan sa ilang area ng Eastern Visayas. And starting tomorrow, araw ng Sabado, mas rarami pa yung mga lugar na makakaranas sa mga pag-ulan. Mas lalakas rin yung mga ulan na ito, especially sa area ng Bicol Region, magpapatuloy dito sa Eastern Visayas. Pata na rin dito sa Greater Metro Manila Area and nearby provinces. So dito sa area ng Central Luzon, as well as Calabar Zone, starting tomorrow, magsisimula na yung mga malalakas sa pag-ulan na dala ni Bagyong Pepito.
Okay, um, Dan, uh, yesterday naglabas yung pag-asa no, ng uh, uh, yung, uh, rain forecasts, yung rainfall forecasts actually, yung probability, uh, I think bagong gawa ninyo ito. Uh, medyo nakakatakot siya kasi kung makikita natin, no, napakaraming areas makakaranas ng intense to heavy, heavy to moderate rains. Mm -hmm. um, yun yung ina kinakaambahan natin right now, eh, no? yung maraming ulan na dala nitong bagyo. Bukod sa super typhoon shot, malakas yung hangin. In terms of rain, uh, how much rain can we expect? Ganun pa rin ba yung nakikita ninyo na marami itong dalang ulan? Uh, yes po, so as of yung latest weather advisory na atin ngang in-issue as of 5 p.m. today, yung concentration ng mga malalakas sa pakulan na dala nitong si Bagyong Pepito, ito yung tinatawag nating intense to torrential rains, greater than 200 millimeters of rainfall, concentrated po dito sa eastern section ng Luzon, so sa area ng, ng Aurora, Quezon Province, Bicol Region, pata na rin sa some parts of uh, eastern Visayas, dito, concent dito po concentrated yung mga pakulan na dala na rain bands. Uh, ni Bagyong Pepito. So hindi lang po dito yung mga lugar na makakaran sa pakulan. No? May mga pakulan rin po tayo tulad ng sinabi ko kanina sa area ng Greater Metro Manila area, Central Luzon, as well as dito sa mga areas ng Calabar Zone. Pagdating naman sa hangin, ano? kasi yung, yun naman ang uh, sinasalamin uh -huh. nung mga signal number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Ano nga inaasahan natin sa dalang hangin ni Bagyong Pepito? Yes po, so as of 5 p.m. nga, so isa-isayin ko po yung mga areas. As of 5 p.m. may tropical cyclone wind signal number 2 tayo dito sa eastern portion ng northern Samar, itong northern portion ng eastern Samar, at sa northeastern portion ng Samar area. Signal number 1 naman dito sa areas ng Aurora, Quezon, dito sa eastern portion ng Laguna, sa area ng Marinduque, sa Camarines Provinces, sa area ng Catanduanes, dito sa Albay, Sorsogon, pati na rin dito sa Masbate. Sa Visayas, may signal number 1 rin dito tayo sa area ng rest or sa nalalabing bahagi ng Northern Samar, sa rest of Eastern Samar, sa rest of Samar, pati na rin dito sa area ng Biliran. Kaya itong wind signal po natin may palugit tayo or warning lead time. So possible within the next 24 hours, kahit sa ngayon wala pa tayong nararanasang mga pagbukso ng hangin. For the next 24 hours, asahan natin in anticipation sa papalapit na bagyong pepito, malaranasan na natin itong mga malalakas sa pagulan, especially sa mga areas under wind signal number 2. And dahil nga patuloy na lumalapit itong bagyong pepito, at inaasahan nga natin na posible pa itong lumakas into a super typhoon category. Yung highest wind signal na posible nating i-issue sa bagyong ito ay wind signal number 5 pag malapit na po ito sa area ng Southern Luzon area. Okay, uh, Dan, uh, bakit nangyayari itong sunod-sunod uh, na bagyo no, na tumatama dito sa Pilipinas? Uh, six tropical cyclones in as many as weeks. Yung una si Julian pa, no, which uh, happened nung last week of September. Uh, Dan, may kinalaman ba ito sa La Nina o sa climate change? Well, sa ngayon po medyo active nga yung ating uh, Pacific Basin. No? So as a result, uh, for the past few weeks, actually starting last month, uh, sunod-sunod po yung mga nam namuong low pressure areas, weather disturbances, and in addition na kung saan yung uh, track na dinadaanan nila, favorable yung environment. As a result, naging bagyo yung mga ito. At kung napansin nga natin, um, halos magkakaparehas yung track nila, similar track sila, almost halos lahat ng bagyo na ito naapektuhan or at least pumama dito or lumapit sa area ng Northern Luzon. Huling tanong na lang, no, bago ka namin pa kawalan. Ilang bagyo pa ba ang pwede natin i-expect ngayong taon ng 2024? Uh, dadami pa ba ito? I know December usually tatama sa Mindanao. So, ganun pa rin ba yung nakikita niyong trend for this year? Gawa ng may laninya tayo? Yes po. So, yun pa rin yung senaryo natin nakikita. No? So, before the year ends, For December, one to two pang bagyo ang ating inasahan. One to two tropical cyclones na posibleng mamuo or pamasok ng ating Philippine Area of Responsibility. And tama nga po yung sinabi mo, no? mas mababa na yung track ng mga bagyo towards end of the year. So possible, yung mga areas na direktang matatamaan na ng bagyo ay itong area ng Southern Luzon, uh, Eastern Visayas area. Maraming salamat uh, para sa updates. Tututukan pa namin no? ang sunod-sunod na updates mula sa pag-asa. That was weather forecaster Dan Villamin. Maraming salamat. Up next, ever wondered what happened to Seaman First Class Jeffrey Facundo, who lost a finger during the June 17 standoff in Ayungin Shoal? The story of his recovery and rehabilitation when we return. Keep it here on One News.
Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Story here on One News. People are still talking about former President Rodrigo Duterte's appearance at the Quadcom hearing in Congress on Wednesday. Vice President Sara Duterte is talking about it too. She called her father's demeanor a mere perform performance that just earned him a prize for, quote, best dramatic actor. Marian Enriquez with the report. Former President Digong flying into sudden rage. Making a punching gesture at a woman and former senator. Until his challenge to the International Criminal Court to come and get him already. I'm asking the ICC to hurry up. This issue has been left hanging for so many years. Matagal man, baka mamatay na ako, hindi na nila ako maimbestiga. These images of her father during the Quad Committee hearing on November 13 did not surprise Sara Duterte anymore. In fact, the vice president said her conversation with the dad she still calls mayor was as casual as it could be. Sabi niya, kumusta uh, yung performance ko? And I said, the best dramatic actor. Sabi niya, you have to rate me from 1 to 10. Sabi ko, you're a 12. Where could Digong be coming from? The VP only had this to say. Uh, kayo na lang yung umintindi, nakikita niya naman sa ginagawa niya eh. So, nakikitang kita. What everyone also saw was Sarah's unannounced appearance at the Quad Inquiry. She explained that she dropped by just to remind her father to eat even while the public hearing was going on. And while the vice president was already in the audience, the House Good Government Committee did not waste time. Sarah was given a letter of invitation to the panel's next hearing to explain confidential funds spent by the OVP and the DEPED she used to lead, amounting to more than 612 million pesos. But Duterte says she is still not going. Inipita nila ako isang beses lang doon sa unang-una. Pumunta ako, umupo ako doon, hindi man nila ako. Tinanong, kaupo lang ako doon. Uh, nasasayang yung oras ko, kaya nagpaalam ako kung pwede akong umalis. But for Good Government Committee Chairman Congressman Joel Chua, there was no use questioning the VP at that time since she refused to take a note. Kasi under sa rules namin, dapat lahat ang mga tatanungin ay uh, take ng oath. Wala rin namang magiging say-say kung ano yung sasabihin niya kung di naman siya magkitake ng oath. Chiu's committee has repeatedly extended an invitation to Duterte since then, but none was accepted. For lawmakers, this goes to show that the VP has no intention at all to show up, nor explain how her agencies spent taxpayers' money. For News 5, I'm Marian Enriquez. We are One News. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Gilbert Teodoro rejects China's warnings about the plan of the Philippines to buy modern military equipment similar to those from the U.S. This all started when the U.S. parked its Typhoon mid-range capability missile launcher in the Philippines. American forces brought it here for the first time in April ahead of the annual Balikatan exercises. The Philippine government expressed its dreams of one day acquiring missile launchers just like the Typhoons. We are planning to have such kinds of capabilities. I'm not saying the Typhoon. I'm saying such kinds of capabilities. Note that a Typhoon weapon system could launch missiles up to 2,000 kilometers away, and that's enough to target possible intruders in the West Philippine Sea. According to Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian, they've been repeatedly opposing this move by the Philippines to bring in what they call an offensive strategic weapon that will just fuel tensions and antagonism in the region. Lin also urged the Philippines to heed what they referred to as a call from the region to correct its wrongdoings by quickly pulling out the Typhoon missile system from the country. This is what Secretary Teodoro had to say to that. I think the whole world knows who is on the right path and the wrong path. Uh, definitely, you know, uh, we cannot take advice from people who distort the truth. And uh, nobody believes them anyway. No. So uh, I think uh, it's a waste of air time to broadcast the claims of China because only their, only their leadership believes in what they say anyway. A note that aside from China, Russia had earlier expressed concern on the deployment of America's missile system in the Philippines. The Russian government said it might spark an arms race that could elevate tensions in the region.
Meanwhile, remember the Filipino soldier who lost a thumb during a standoff with China in a Yungin show last June? Well, he actually underwent several medical procedures to help him regain function of his severed thumb. Here's a story of how that went. It was June 17, 2024, when the Philippine Navy encountered the most aggressive actions yet from the Chinese Coast Guard on a rotation and resupply mission to the BRP Shara Madre in Ayungin Shoal. Carrying bladed weapons, Filipino soldiers were harassed, tear gassed, and met with blaring sirens and blinding strobe lights. With tempers raging, the encounter quickly turned bloody. A Chinese boat rammed a Filipino boat, causing seaman First Class Jeffrey Facundo to lose his thumb. Yet the Philippine Naval Special Operations Command, our version of the U.S. Navy SEALs, kept their restraint. So as we award these medals, we remember that on June the 17th, we made a conscious and deliberate choice to remain in the path of peace. But what happens now to a commando who has to live on with an impairing disability? It hopes to restore its finger, the AFP Medical Center, Makati Medical Center Foundation, and Congressional Spouses Foundation teamed up to help Siman Facundo for a procedure called thumb lengthening. Ang thumb niya nun is may na lang. So, halos wala na ito. So, may na lang siya. Wood, close na yung wound, medyo pag maganda na yung sugat. So, ang gagawin lang talaga sa kanya nun is paano ibabalik yung function niya sa mga kagawa siya ng mga activities of daily living life. Magsusulat o kukuha ng kutsara, magbubukas ng pinto. Because you have to harvest the skin with the uh -huh. blood vessels. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At the same time, gusto mo din kasi maliban sa buhay, gusto mo may pakiramdam. So, we also have to harvest the nerve. Uh -huh along with the skin, nakita dun sa task na significantly no, improved siya by 20 to 30 percent. Thankfully, the operation was successful and it lighted up hopes that this public-private partnership will open more doors in caring for our disabled soldiers. So it's the first joint surgery. There are a lot of ongoing projects between Makati Med and AFP Medical Center. Um, and specially geared towards helping the battle casualties and uh, specifically to wound care. It's a public-private um, partnership to offer services for the battle casualties, specifically in wound care and trauma. Napakalaking ano no, ito, yung, yung medical conditions ng, ng ano, na hindi ka mag-worry na even malaking operasyon ang kailangan mo o mahal ito aabutin, hindi ka mag-worry as sa sundano and you can concentrate on your heroism and sacrifice for the country knowing at the back of your mind na kahit anong mangyari sa'yo, kung ano man maging condition mo, the AFP has your back. Hmm. Ang gano'ng kakalaking bagay sa'yo na nabalik mo na yung paggalaw mo? Malaking bagay. Pero... Halos na uh, 50% ng lahat ng activity na nagagawa ko, wala na. Yung 50% na, na natitira, at least meron pa. May purpose pa rin ng Panginoon. Binigyan pa rin ako ng uh, bone lengthening. Sa tulong na binigay niya po sa pag-opera sa kamay ko, uh, at sa lahat po ng bumubuo uh, ng Makati Medical Foundation po, mm -hmm. Salamat po uh, sa mga taong tumulong po sa akin at sumubagay na tumutulungan ako ng taos puso po. Wala man po akong naibigay sa inyo na tulong. Uh, sa, nagpapasalamat po ako ng taos puso sa inyo. Bayani ka na? Ay, lahat naman po nang nandoon bayan. Hindi lang naman ako. Gretchen Ho, We Are One News. We're going to take another quick break, but up next, we'll be speaking with lawyer Rafael Kalinisan, who has been recently named as Commissioner of the National Police Commission. Keep it here on One News. Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Story here on One News. Well, Napalcom has a new commissioner after the resignation of Edilberto Leonardo. And we have with him with us tonight. Welcome to The Big Story, Attorney Rafael Kalinisan. Congratulations on the new appointment to Napalcom. Salamat po. Salamat po. Uh, well, and thank you for coming yeah. over. Uh, we understand. Day Big day. One. Day it one is pala. Day one to today. Uh, I started my... Uh -huh. 
7.30 a.m. in the office already and it's, uh, ano, naantok na nga ako eh. This is my second cup in the past 30 minutes. Well, you're not new yeah. to this kind of job. You were chairman of the QC uh, People's um, Law Enforcement Law Board, enforcement board Pleb. the PLEB. Yes. You've been trying policemen. Um, what is your mandate here and how did this appointment fall on your lap? So, I got wind of this appointment uh, Tuesday. Um, pero long playing ito eh. I actually met with the president uh, last year already. Last year pa. Mm -hmm. And uh, very clear instructions sa akin ni President Marcos was to clean the police force. Pero as we all know, the, uh, there are fixed terms in Napolcom. Mm -hmm. So, six-year term yun eh. Mm -hmm. So, there was really nothing much to discuss. Actually, si Presidente very hands-on. Um, if you would remember it, when I said, I'm the chairman of PLEB, mm. um, Quezon City, mm -hmm. and uh, he was interested to know all of the cases uh, in Quezon City. So I, I salute the president. So from there, ang, ang direct, directive niya, ang mandate niya is to actually clean the police force. And more or less, na tatansya ko na, na where this is heading. Mm. So, but mm -hmm. since wala namang directly sinabi sa akin, but I, I met the president actually four more times after that mm -hmm. uh, in the presidential trips abroad in U.S. and Vietnam and in our uh, reunion in La Salle Green Hills. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same direction. It's the very clear, clean the police force. And uh, nangyari mga nangyari, uh, Quadcom happened, uh, revelations happened, uh, Sadly, some mismanagement happened in the, Nas the National Police Commission. Uh, there were vacancies. And uh, I got wind of uh, my appointment last Tuesday. Di ko naman na expect um, So it was more, more or less, more than a year in the making. And uh, ready naman tayo eh. Um, doon pa natin ginagawa. Uh, kumaga, hindi alam ng tao, hindi ganong ka-publicized yung trabaho natin. Um, and uh, we're ready. Yun nga, I was just gonna say, attorney, no, na yung Napolcom, kasi hindi siya masyadong uh, people-facing. Kasi police talaga yung, mm -hmm. yung minamanage ninyo, eh, di ba? Mm -hmm. Kung mga paparusahan, like this, try to find a way to make it better. Now, um, for those who don't understand what the function of the Napolcom is, no, um, what do you think, being uh, an outsider, but I understand, I already googled you, and I understand your dad. Bagay nga sa last so, name niya, Kalinisa. Oo nga, yun yung sinabi ko. Sabi ko na makabagay naman. Ang ganda naman nung last name nung bagong commissioner, Kalinisa. Pero your, your parents were both in the service. Yes, correct. Right? So how do you, uh, what do you see, No, and I'm sure you've talked, you've heard about the stories from your dad. Um, going into this new job, since day one pala, may mga broad plans ka ba? Or is it more like figuring out what they're doing and trying to just No, adjust? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm ready and I'm uh, hitting the ground running. So since 7:30 na umaga until before I came here, no, I, I had a series of uh, meetings. Di ko nga sinabi sa kanila I'm arriving 7:30 earlier than mm -hmm. all of them. So mula sa, sa taong kasabay ko sa elevator, sundan ko, led to another meeting, to another meeting. So I met with the Association of Employees, I met with the Integrity Management Office there, uh, Investigation Service, mm -hmm. I met with the Legal Service, mm -hmm. I met with the Regional Directors already. Mm -hmm. um, Kung mga nakausap ko na ang lahat ng stakeholders uh, in day one, mm -mm. Uh, alam ko na rin ang gagawin kasi uh, handa na ako eh. Kung mga... Pero attorney, anong yeah. difference ng um, Napolcom sa Internal mm. Affairs Service so, within the PNP? Sobrang laki. Actually, let me differentiate. Dagdag ko na yung PLEB kasi advocacy ko yan eh. So yung Napolcom, uh, constitutional body yan. So under Article 16 of the Constitution, yun yung... Uh, administers and controls the national police. So, kumbaga, meron talagang uh, dinikta yung framers of the Constitution na isang check and balance mechanism, which is the National Police Commission. There shall be one police force, national in scope and character, uh, to be administered, administered and controlled by the, so the National Police So you have authority Commission. over the PNP? Yes, the okay. National Police, uh, the PNP reports to the uh, Na National Police Commission. IAS, yung IAS on the other hand, uh, Gretch. Ito yung internal lang uh, sa PNP. In fact, they're only recommendatory. Ah. Wala silang ngipin eh. So they can just investigate and recommend to the chief PNP. So si chief PNP yung bahala kung he will accept or not mm -mm. yung recommendation ng IAS. Mm -mm. Whereas yung PLEB, yung pinanggalingan natin, ito yung uh, least known of all of these three. Uh, ito yung people's court, people's investigator. So yun naman eh. Ordinary person ang naka, naka, nakasampa doon, uh, a complaint comes in, then uh, uh, the PLEB investigates and here's the case. Yun ang difference. But yung PLEB malakas din yun. Para siyang pao. 
pa. Hindi, iba rin yung PAO. Iba rin, iba rin. Malayo, malayo yung PAO. So, totally so, so iba planeta yun. So, the PLEB is composed of uh, ordinary citizens? Ordinary citizens. Parang citizens' court. Oh. Citizens' court. It's a citizens' so court. So, where is it tried? Kayo mag mag-file ng case sa korte? No, they try it with us. Ah, with so, the we PLEB. are the judges. Oh. Okay. We're the investigator judges. So, kami nagde-desisyon kung... Are you going to be suspended, dismissed, reprimanded, or uh, So absolved? the local police is subject to the pleb? Yes, correct. Per city. Since mm. 1991 pa yan. And in fact, very, very little is known about the pleb. So nung nandun ako, talaga sinubukan natin buhayin for the past four years. And medyo naging successful tayo, pero syempre kulang pa rin. Isa lang yung Quezon City. Happy nga ako kay Mayor Joy. Shout out to Mayor Joy na... Uh, reorganize niya yung PLEB ng Quezon City at medyo yun na pinaka-active na PLEB. Attorney, I'm guessing your experience with PLEB is what got you this appointment. Yes. Hoping maybe that uh, you can apply certain things mm. from one mm. to the NAPOCOM. If, if I may, no? If I may. Yeah. So yung sa PLEB, sa damakmak yung case backlog dyan. In fact, ang lupit na minana natin na uh, may 10-year cases, 12-year cases, sobrang dami. So in my first six months, uh, from those uh, in, immense backlog, Zero backlog na tayo ngayon. And the cases from filing of the complaint until mm -hmm. the decision, mm -hmm. 60 days. Mm -hmm. I think that's the fastest in the country. Mm -hmm. So, nakapag-file ng complaint, nasampa for probable cause, hanggang naglabas ng decision, may hearing na yun, ha? Hearing. Mm -hmm. 60 days. Mas madali bang, ano, imbestigahan kapag uh, involved yung mga PNP, Napakahirap, napakahirap. Or is it harder? Kung baga compared difficult. to a civilian? It's more difficult. Siyempre, may chapa at uniforme at baril yan. Mm -hmm. Um, totoo lang, nakakatakot yan eh. Hindi ko alam, ba't ako napadpad dyan eh? Uh, so, so, so wait lang, so when you try the, the policemen sa PLEB, yeah. you make a recommendation to the LGU? No, it is our decision. It is enforced are, right away? No, no, By no. the PNP? Yeah, it, it is, how should I put it? Theoretically, syempre ito kailangan enforce ng PNP yun, but it is the decision of the PLEB. So the PLEB's decision is immediately executory. So, bagsin nagsabi yung pleb o dismiss, dismiss. Okay, what, wh why we invited you here yeah. is because we know that Quezon City yeah. is um, described by some as the ground zero of yes. Duterte's drug war yes. here in Manila. Mm. Um, referring to the Batasan Police Station, which was where sinabi na in Dundaw, in Davao Boys. Mm. Oh, sinulat yeah. ni, I think, mm. Mani Mani mo gato sa kanyang mm. Pulitzer mm. Prize winning article. Mm. Uh, meron bang nakarating sa'yo ng mga ganong kaso na extrajudicial killing? We're able to solve it in, in 60 days. I mean, how, how do uh, ito. you... Nalulungkot nga ako, hindi sila nag-file ng kaso sa akin eh. I was appointed 2020, the tail end of the Duterte administration. Mm -hmm. uh, July 2021 na appoint. So there were no cases filed. In fact, because walang may alam ng pleb, sadly, during that time, konting-konti um, yung papasok na mga EJ case dyan. Uh, in fact, takot yung tao mag-file ng na kahit anong kaso dyan. But hindi kami natakot noon sa pleb, ang hindi man kami nakapag hear ng kaso about EJ case because nasudulo na kami. Ang ginawa namin during that time, inubutan namin yung mga red tagging. Mm -hmm. So, yun yung mga pag-upo ko, yun ang dinatan ko. Yun ang uso nun. Mm -hmm. Yung uh, nagbebenta na lang ng gulay, tapos eh, kuminista ka na. Mm -hmm. So, yun ang uh, we put a stop to it. We issued show cause orders. So, no, sa, no, th there was no case filed on none, EJ case? None. Nagaantay ako. Nagaantay ako. Actually, I was hoping for that case. Meron bang expiry date itong mga kaso? Meaning, can I file a case um, now? Now na, kunyari, ngayon lang ako nakahanap ng lakas loob, pero yung issue ang nagyari pa 2016, part pa tayo ng room statute nun. Mm. Walang kinalaman ni room statute Wala. sa PLEB. Ha? So you can actually file a case with uh, the PLEB. You can actually file a case with IAS. You can file, you can file a case with the NAPOLCOM. Since we're now talking about NAPOLCOM, file it with NAPOLCOM. Hindi pa nag-overlap yung mga... Overlap. Overlap siya. Eh. So Pero, parang, kasi di ba lagi natin pinag-uusapan, even uh, President Marcos says, right size the bureaucracy. Uh, so kung may pleb tayo, may, of course, kailangan talaga ng IAS. I think lahat naman ng police forces may ganun. Pero may pleb tayo, meron tayong NAPOLCOM, di ba nag, oo, oh, oh, yun nga. Hindi, kasi baliktad eh, ang power malupit sa state eh. So sobrang the state wields uh, so much power, especially the policeman. So under the law, uh, given the guidance of the legislature, yung mga Congress uh, and the Senate, they deemed it wise to put up check and balance mechanisms in government. Mm -hmm. So, yun ang wisdom nila, and we have to uh, agree to but, that. But could you help us understand um, why the former president keeps on saying in the hearings that no case has been filed against him and against all else that's being tagged in the drug war? Is it 
very difficult because it's one thing to file a case and mm. another thing to get evidence mm. and to get witnesses to come forward, mm. which is what said ni uh, former uh, Justice Secretary Laila de Lima, mm. na takot yung mga witness na magsalita. Mm. Pero tatlong taon na sa Marcos mm. administration at wala pa rin kaso. Um, can you help us understand what's the difficulty um, that we face in investigating our own police force? Yung criminal case, syempre nagaantay pa rin sila ng complainants. Of course, it's the, a case done against the, the state. No? Pero syempre, para tumayo yung kaso, kinakilangan ng complainant. Pero if I may say, no, uh, so there are, in this particular case, there may be two relevant cases. Criminal cases, which can be filed with the DOJ. Mm -hmm. And administrative cases, which can be filed with the NAPOLCOM. So yung criminal case, yun yung kulong. Yung administrative case, yun yung fitness to be a policeman. Mm. So kung yung level ng ebidensya na kailangan for someone to be put to jail, uh, mataas yun eh. Uh, beyond, proof beyond reasonable beyond doubt. Reasonable doubt. Mm. Mas mababa ng dihamak yung ebidensyary requirement kapag administrative case. So in a way, kung siguro kung may gusto mag-file ng case with NAPOLCOM mm -hmm. doon sa EJK, very much welcome. We can investigate. Okay, okay attorney, uh, in your work nga, no, with QC mm. Pleb, uh, you take pride in resolving cases as fast as 60 days. Sabi mo, pinakamabilis yes. sa Pilipinas. Mm. You mm. think you can replicate that on a national level? Sana. Is that doable? Kaya, Sana. Kamaginiting the Pleb system. Sana. Oh. Sana. Oh. Sana. <laughs> may double model. Uh, oh. If I may, no, um, and gusto ko maitindihan nyo rin, uh, I am just one vote. I am only one of six, uh, a six-member commission. Correct. Um, I cannot impose my will on the other five. I can only speak for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pero majority wins yan, di ba? Yeah. When you vote, it's yes, the pero usual. Yes, oh, gusto, itong gusto ko, 60 days tayo. But I need, I cannot speak for the five. Mm -hmm. I can only speak for myself. There's still one empty spot right now. There's uh, four commissioners, right? Uh, six, actually. One is uh, General Mar Marbil, PNP mm -hmm. chief. Mm -hmm. Second is the DILG secretary. Mm -hmm. Then there's four mm -hmm. um, civilian mm -hmm. kind of like uh, commissioners. Mm -hmm. But bakante yung isa pang spot? Yeah, and uh, like, uh, it has just filled up. So, today also? Um, he, yeah, he reported to work mm -hmm. today. So mm -hmm. our we were supposed to meet the SILG... Uh, 2 o'clock uh, earlier today, pero nagkaroon ng NDRRMC since me bagyo, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, na-cancel na yun. So, we will we are rescheduling Mari, ba namin malam ko sino yun? Uh, ano, Tindala natin yung announcement. <laughs> okay. Oh. Pero gusto ko yung sinabi mo no, sa iyong Facebook post. Panahon na ng pagbabago, panahon na para magtagumpay ang tama at totoo, tapos na ang patayan sa ating bayan. It ends now. Mm -hmm. Police abuse stops with me and this government, ang bagong police malinis. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to do that? And are you listening to the hearings? Mm. Is there any way that you know um, we their cases will be built against those uh, the, the the revelations in the hearings? Uh, I, I I plan to meet uh, and seek clearance with uh, the SILG. Kita naman natin na the DOJ already formed a task force uh, to investigate the EJ case at least for the criminal aspect. Like I mentioned, we need to discuss the administrative aspect of that, and I cannot do it on my own. So I'm just one. So I need to bring in the other five mm -hmm. so we can investigate the EJ case as far as administrative liability is concerned. So ang pangako ko sa taong bayan, yung isang boto na yan, gagamitin natin yan, we will uh, make sure na yung one vote na yan, it will count. And uh, I promise, though, though we are friends with the PNP, hindi natin kaawa yan. Uh, ang, ang PNP, kaibigan natin, mm -hmm. Tatay ko at nanay ko, nakasuot ng uniforme, mm. hindi natin para sirain Ang yan. reports na nakakarating sa Napolcom galing kanino? What do you mean? Sino ang nag naghahain ng reports anyone sa Napolcom? Anyone can file a case. Anyone? Iba yung, yeah, Civilians? Anyone. Civilians. Oh, okay. Anyone. Okay. Even you. Even an ordinary guy. Even anyone. So, welcome. Welcome siya. So, ang, ang akin dito, um, if anyone files a case with us, pangako ko sa inyo, yung boto ko, I can't speak for the other five. Pero yung isa na yun, I will try to make sure, and I, I'm doing my job right now, pati yung legal service, kinausap na natin, we will try to uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. investigate these cases. Oh, day one. Oh. Well, congratulations <laughs> one on, on the, the appointment. And we hope no, na uh, ma-whip ninyo yung other commissioners uh, into We do hope to action. see cases come to life because we've been talking about that for a long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but for tonight, no, wala tayong oras. Nagagalit na si Marisa. It is. <laughs> it is almost time to say goodbye. So, but thank you so much for joining us on the, on the first day of work. Well, it is a Friday. It is a Friday. We'll, rep uh, I guess, call you back. Uh, pagka medyo gumagalaw na. We understand it's just the beginning.
Okay, we have Napo Napocom, newly minted Napocom mm -hmm. Commissioner Rafael Kalinisan. And like we said, wala na tayong oras. Friday, but uh, no reason to pa chill chill lang. Kasi kailan natin magbantay ng panahon. That's it for the big story tonight. We are One News, all sides, all the time. Please stay safe and stay dry over the weekend. Thank you very much for tuning in to the big story.